So, your business today. Jeez, what's the best business tip you've ever received? Would you say he is the most influential figure in your life? The door. <laughs> I started yeah. winging it, man, like a helicopter. Oh I know what's lifting up. So, the, the best thing that someone ever told me, I want to know about how you cope mentally. Years where I find myself smoking weed or doing something I shouldn't be doing. And the biggest mistake that I certainly made in a lot of places. If we've got Chris Chris on board, then this guy might have been. Hi and welcome to the Movecast. This is episode one and with me you can see Chris Cross. Chris McGee, you probably already know, uh, very well recognised in the removals industry. Travelled from Belfast today, started his company in 2016 and we are very privileged to have you with us, bro. Thank you very much. What Thank you very much for inviting me on, guys. Well, well. Appreciate <laughs> it. Yep. Really, really excited to be here and honestly, it's a privilege to be here as well. Yeah. yeah on this podcast so well you, you travel you got up at 4 a.m and you were on the flight at yeah. 7 a.m yeah and yeah. it's only come yeah. for this yes so exactly we're honored and obviously the first guest on our podcast had to be mr the chris the first guest so uh the podcast yeah, so master on this podcast we'd like to start with a business question try and prov sure. provide a bit of value for our Probably. audience yeah uh, the first business question is what's the best business tip you've ever received? Oh God, do you know, there's so many ways that I can answer this question, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with the best business advice that I've ever received, and I, I wanna kinda segue it into a different um, thing. So the, the best thing that someone ever told me was first of all to build a team, because the biggest mistake that I certainly made and a lot of business owners make whenever they first you know, start their own business, they're starting off their business as a technician. Yeah. You know, so like, we're, we're going into to the removals industry, we're starting off as a removals man. We're doing all the quotes ourselves, yep. dealing with all the phone calls, we're doing all the jobs. And we never sort of transition, a lot of them never transition and break out of that. So the, big, the best business advice that I ever received was you need to hire a team if you want to grow. Yeah. And it's something that keeps playing in my mind all the time, you know, like building teams, building teams, building teams. Yeah. And honestly, when you start to think about your business like a team, rather than just you are the business. That is the, the best advice I've ever yeah. received. Great advice, yeah, yeah. Well, in this industry, you can't do it alone, can yeah, you? And, you and, if you, and it's, a, it's a hard part of any business, but especially removals, to, to spot talent and build the right team, because you know bad apples can come in. Yeah, and it, it, get, it, it, it gets especially hard whenever you're trying to step off the vans and into the business owner role, because you, you're not there to control the job anymore. You might have a couple of good guys, but when you're trying to scale that service and trying yeah. to get, trying to drive your values and your mission and your standards into your team, it's yeah. really, really important. Yeah. So whenever you come off the vans and you're trying to let them, let, let your team sort of deal with the day-to-day -day jobs, yeah. but still adhere to the same standards, it can be very difficult. Is that <laughs> something that you worry about, growing and it's hard losing to let control? Go, it's hard to let go sometimes. Yeah, definitely. It certainly was in the beginning. Uh, whenever, whenever I first sort of stepped off the vans and became a manager, it's something I definitely did worry about. Yeah. But actually, now, now that we're, we're actually in a different phase now, we're more worried about the managers and the workload that's put on them. Yeah, okay. And, and the, the, the little nuanced situations that could come up. But in terms of the day-to-day -day jobs, like the guys that we have are fantastic. Yeah. So I don't ever really have to worry about anything on a job. Yeah. Out of the ordinary, out of the ordinary anyway. Yeah. That's a good answer. Very, very good answer. So I want to, yeah. same as you, Bob, I think we both want to find out a little bit more about Chris Cross. Where yeah. he's from, we know you're from Belfast. Yeah. We want to know your, your upbringing, your school life, and uh, what subject you excelled in. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't ever a great student. I'm, the thing about, I'll, I'll sort of bring it back to like teenage years. So when I was growing up, um, you know, we, we, we moved about quite a lot, moved from Belfast up to a, a different town called Bangor and then back down again. But as a teenager, I was actually very shy. Okay. I was very small. Um, I had these weird looking teeth and I had like glasses. It was quite like almost like nerdy, which made me a, an absolute prime target for bullies. Yeah, <laughs> of course. So it was like throughout my teenage years, it was actually very shy and quiet. And it wasn't really till I got to about age 18, 19, where I sort of started to get a little bit chubby. And then I decided I wanted to do something about it. Boxing was like my 
go-to sport. I loved it. Okay. So I decided to start boxing. And it was only like then whenever I started sort of gaining a bit of self-confidence. And yeah. then, you know, another thing that really helped was doing the boxing was one thing, you were losing the weight. But then whenever I started working in hotels and bars, I started getting a real knowledge of how to socialize and how to talk to people. Yeah. So that that's really sort of helped me in my career. And you know, you're talking to when you're in bars stuff, you're talking to girls and stuff, and you're yeah, of course, yeah, a little bit of confidence. confidence yeah, um, but yeah, look, the childhood part was 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 quite strange. But then, like, it was one sort of till the late teen years where I started to really develop a bit of self confidence. Um, but in terms of school, like, I, I wasn't, I was never a great student. Um, I was. My dad would always say that I'm, I was pretty naturally clever. Yeah. Like he would say, you were always very smart, but you just never really applied yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I think you don't try as hard as some people, but you still, you still got there. Yeah. Well, funny actually, there was one particular. I, I was doing a group project in university, and we had agreed. The three guys lived in Port Stewart, which was the the place where the university was. And I was part of the group project, but I was traveling up and down to Belfast, and I was like a bit of a party animal back then. Yeah. You know, I was in the hotels and wanting to be a student, and yeah. didn't really apply myself. But we had agreed, you know, we all had to do this set amount of work. And one of the guys then sort of changed everything, like right in the middle of the project, and I didn't see them for about a week and came back. Yeah. I presented my work, and he told me, uh, you know, we're not doing that anymore. Uh, we're, we've completely changed your scope of the work, and I was like, Jeez. well, nobody, nobody's actually told me. Um, and they, they ended up going to the teacher the next day and, and saying to him, or the, the lecturer at the time, and they told him about it. And then he basically kicked me out of the group and told me I had to do the whole project myself. Oh, bloody hell. And I was like, I was like <laughs> what an absolute... I was really, really annoyed because it was such a, such a, a bad move. Somebody could have communicated to me. Yeah. But I actually ended up scoring higher than them in uh, their group project that I yeah, did the whole yeah, thing myself. So, <laughs> Like, I, I, I always had the natural ability, but I was always just lazy when it came to university. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it was only really when I started working, I started really applying myself. Yeah. And when you came out of university then, yeah. and you got a job, or did you start a business then? Have you always had that entrepreneurial what, blood? What was your first job? What was it? Your first ever job? My, my first job, I've been working since I was 12. In my, my, I used to work in my dad's bar and pool hall. So he owned like a pool hall and it had a, like a bar underneath it. Really, really popular place in Belfast. But we used to go in and we used to hoover the, the snooker and pool halls in the morning. And then I remember the first day he brought me down to the bar and asked me to empty a bottle skip. And there was like half a sausage inside of it and said like a big puddle of beer. And I was like... Yeah, no, this is this work and carry on isn't for me. But I'm really glad because even though every week we kept going back, kept going back, we were working from very early on. Yeah, so yeah. I feel I had a, a real advantage by the time I got to 17, 18, 19. About that, yeah. When yeah. I had really found my stride with work and everybody, yeah. you know, a lot of my peers were just catching up and yeah. didn't want to work. So you gained a lot of life experience well. then. Yeah. So yeah. let me just go back a minute. There was a job role uh, for a 12 year old hoovering out. Snooker pockets. Yeah, but it was his dad's place, wasn't it? Yeah, but that yeah. was the job role he created. Yeah. 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 Who brought the snooker pockets. Yeah, basically, <laughs> basically cleaner, like cleaner slash sausage picker. <laughs> that um, is brilliant. Whatever way you want to put it. Mate, it's Belfast, isn't it? Yeah, it's just Belfast. <laughs> <That's what happens. laughs> so I mean, obviously you're from an entrepreneurial family then. Yeah, yeah. Dad, dad was a businessman and a very good one. So he's been able to guide me a lot over the years. And yeah. he's given me some really great advice. Um, but yeah, it's good, it's good to have someone like that. I've always really looked up to him. Yeah. Would you say he is the most influential figure in your life? Um, I would say that he is, yes, I would say that now he is. Um, you know, you know as, a, as a boy, when you sort of transition into becoming a man, maybe there's a bit of pushback against your dad. But, yeah. You know, as the last few years, we've really got close. But um, if I need advice or help, I would usually go to him. Because yeah. he is very, he's been a very important figure. And not only... And because I, I would be quite an impulsive person and sometimes he would bring me a little bit back down. Yeah, yeah. But then it's that really energy yeah. whenever you're going for something exciting can be it can be a, it can be a double edged sword. Yeah, of course. So you, yeah. you need someone to bring you back down to earth, but then you also don't want someone like holding you back when oh, it is a good decision. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> but it, we we always seem to find some sort of nuanced balance when we're talking about things and he is a great 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 guy to go to for, for any for any advice for anybody really. Yeah. 
What about your mum? What's your relationship like with, with your mum? Amazing. Is it? Mum's yeah. mom's, mom's the t- typical Irish mum. She yeah. loves the... <laughs> She's always like that. Dad always made sure we were, you know, he was, he was worked a lot when we were younger. He wasn't always there, like in the house at times, because he yeah. worked late, long hours, late nights. Mum was always at home, so mum kind of kept us alive, got us to school, cooked our food, yeah. um, really made sure we were well nurtured. It was really had that like positive sort of feminine role in our yeah. lives as well, which was which was amazing. So yeah. even to this day, me and my mum have a great relationship. So I'm plenty really, of all these shoes. Uh. <laughs> I like the fact what you just said there because that's something that I, me and Tash refer to. Yeah. Tash keeps the kids alive. I keep them having fun. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And yeah, I'm obviously not as there as much as Tash. Yeah. But Tash definitely keeps them alive. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. The same to... yeah, yeah. 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 I think it is for everybody's business owner to you be think? fair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. We, we were brought up on turkey dinosaurs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And those wee, uh, those wee smelly waffles. Oh, we used to have the pizzas, you know, the, pe- the pizzas in a pack of ten. Oh, yeah, yeah. Them, microwaves. Yeah, yeah microwave <laughs> pizzas, yeah, yeah, yeah. And dripping, do you remember dripping? Do you ever used to have that Sunday dinner? I don't know, if you do you have Sunday dinner in Belfast? Yeah, Sunday, yeah, of course. Yeah. Dripping you and you get the bread and dip it in the leftovers. I've heard of this. And then you see, it. It. now it'd, it'd be like frowned upon. Yeah. But at the time, it was, maybe that's what I was about. I've never had ten it, but I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. Just the, the Sunday, dinner, the Sunday <laughs> dinner is kind of a universal thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry, we, we digress. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so jobs, you, you was working at the bar, what was your next job? So um, from the bar, I, I kind of worked in bars for quite a lot of years, so I transitioned from you know working at my dad's place, then I went to the another bar uh, in Belfast, uh, and then I ended up moving into hotel work. So I was working in the Hilton Hotel for a long time, um, from you know supervisor, waiter, ma- sorry, barman, waiter, then on the supervisor for a very short period of time. And then after that, I actually went down to a telesales role to sell a car insurance. Oh, did you? Yeah, but it was called, it was for like over 60s. Um, it was called Rias Car Insurance. And seeing now that I look back, it was probably one of the dodgiest insurance yeah. companies <laughs> yeah, was, yeah, ever. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, you know, sometimes you call people selling them insurance, they were like 80 years old. Yeah. And they were like, can't you over <laughs> your, their credit card details? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. It just felt wrong. But yeah. um, Did anyway. you think you learned a lot in that? I definitely well, learned yeah. a lot about sales, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's you a know, good, skill, good life skill to have in it, sales, like definitely, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah. I always say to anybody, if you're trying to you know, progress in your career, especially if you're already on, if you learn marketing and sales, yeah, they're, right they're the key roles that yeah. you want to be focusing on early if you yeah, really yeah. want to get a good job. No, I agree with that completely. I used to, um, I, people who know me know that I'd, I've had about 200 jobs. You know, I was quite lucky yeah. to find Warren's in the end, but I've been through every job going, haven't I? <laughs> yeah. And one of my jobs was I used to sell um, soffits, facial and guttering. Yeah. <laughs> used to get leads, I remember, I remember that stage, yeah. yeah. You used so, to get leads, didn't you? So you used to get a text message, and then you used yeah. to have to go to the house and sell guttering. It, it wasn't like um, a, a proper job, really. It was like yeah. I'd get a call and they'd say, I've got a lead and it's in Worcester, you need to go now, and I'd have to put a, like, a suit on. Didn't <laughs> <I>? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'd go and knock on the door and I'd always shit myself and um, try and sell guttering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I learned so much, you know oh, what I mean? I learned how to handle Jackson. customers. Cold, uh, cold yeah. sales is a big yeah, one, yeah. isn't it? Cold Definitely. sales is probably one yeah. of the most difficult jobs to get into. Yeah. But once you get past that, people slam on the phone, you know, shut the door. Yeah. It kind of does give you that little bit of confidence. To, to it did. Keep I learned a lot. I definitely brought a lot into Warren's removals just from that. Yeah. And, and in yeah. fact, I hated that industry, do you know yeah. what I mean? But in, it's actually benefited me now. Yeah. yeah. Why, did, why did you hate the industry? Because it was cutthroat. Yeah. And it was very... What I hated about it is you sat in the living room with, like, Mrs. Smith. Yeah. And you'd, yeah. you'd say, I measured up your, your guttering. <laughs> and um, it's going to cost £4,500. And yeah. they'd always be like, oh, God, I'm going to have to think about this. Or I've got to speak to my son or something like that. And then you'd have to, this is company policy, you'd have to bring the manager in front of them and then the manager would then tell you how to act and you've got a bar to river, you kind of have to apply pressure, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they'd say, we can offer you 50% off if you sign now. And it was very forced. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was horrible, do you know what I mean? I yeah. hated it. Yeah. And then if you didn't sell, you'd get crucified, like yeah. in meetings and stuff. Yeah. It was horrible. So it's the using the, the tactic, the authority takeover, you know, you were, you were phoning the manager to then get the discount. But I've been in a very 
similar sales job for a very brief ter- period of time. I always thought it felt sleazy and yeah, it yeah. felt, you know, it didn't oh. feel right. You know, yeah. when you're selling removals, and I certainly feel when I'm selling my removal service, I can I can honestly paint the picture because I know I'm passionate about it. Uh, yeah. the service yeah, yeah. deliver. If if you're trying to sell something that's mm. not that just doesn't feel right, there's always like yeah. an element of. Um, I, I, it's like you're losing your integrity, yeah, isn't it? It, it, yeah, shouldn't, yeah. it shouldn't feel like yeah. selling, should it? Do you know what I mean? It's sales, it shouldn't feel like you're selling something. No. You should just be guiding someone to, yeah. to the product. You One thing I mean? that I'd never want to do with Warren's, and I've told all the staff, is I'd never want it to be target driven. I'd never be like, why didn't you win that quote? Why didn't you do this? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Because it applies too much pressure, yeah. and that's when the team can fall out of love. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? You can, you can flip that on its head and say, you know, if, if you're using the data in a positive way, you could see, you could go, right, well, you didn't get this many quotes accepted, but you got this many quotes accepted. Why don't we jump on and analyze two or three of each call and see maybe what you did wrong and yeah. what, what we can improve on? That yeah. would be a real positive way to see yeah. it. Yeah, rather, yeah. Than, rather than, you know, sort of apply that sort of pressure on people. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's what, it's what I want to do with Wazzy Zoom calls, actually, for I move. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The good, I, I, the good ones and the bad ones. We need to start analysing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See the see the uh, percentage at the end. Has he got a forty-five minutes? Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. He's got he's got a not a bad uh, success rate at the minute. Actually. Yeah, I'm doing yeah. alright. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's just some people with, with iMove. Obviously, everyone's busy. Yeah. And I really like doing Zoom calls so I can show them the software, how it works, yeah. do a screen share with them, like yeah. I did with you. Yeah, yeah. But some people just be like, no, I'm okay, I've just got no time, can you just send me a login kind of thing? And, yeah. and I don't like that because I want to get to know them as well, I want to build a yeah, relationship yeah, yeah. and stuff, so that's something that I'm trying to push. Yeah. I, love when, I love it when I get a Zoom call. Yeah, yeah you I? do, yeah. yeah. I absolutely <laughs> love it, yeah. There was a stage where, where we could, it was getting, like, he was getting like free a day, weren't right? you? Yeah, free a day, yeah. and I got free this week, free the next day, and it was yeah. like, he set your, your office back there. Yeah. And yeah, no, it was good, uh, but yeah, hopefully. We'll get more of the same in the launch. Yeah, yeah. keep them coming. You, People like you using iMove now, you know, you, hopefully you can be a bit of a su- support for us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's just initially from, from us starting to use it, we're just still in the transition phase, but already I can see, and, and even with speaking with your team today, like how it, I actually asked your team, like, you know, is there any little subtle nuance things that you could maybe teach me to be more efficient? Yeah. Uh, and Esther was able to show me a couple of things, which was really, really good. Yeah. Just, just little, little things that you may not pick up on for a while. And yeah. She was able to just show me. That's you, good. You just know that it's going to be more efficient as time goes on. Yeah. But like with implementing any new system in a business, you know, there's always teething issues and people course, trying yeah. to get used yeah. to it and stuff. But like. It's my job to look at the bigger picture and go, right, yeah. in, in five to six months' time, this is going to be really, really great for our business. Yeah. Well, as I'm sure you guys have already seen. Yeah, no, without that. Hopefully, you know, it's great to have you on board. Uh, what yeah. were you going to say? No, no, I was, was going to say, because like, I was always, what I always said to was, if we can get one person... To, to like, I always think if you get one person to like it, then then other people will like it. But then I thought if if we've got Chris Chris on board, then this game over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's generally what I thought. Like, because yeah. actually I didn't know you personally, yeah. uh, but I, I, I knew you through the social media, uh, and you was I think you was probably up there with one bit better than Warren. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, no, but and, and I thought like well, Warren had you in on the uh, course, mm-hmm. and you just sounded like a ledge. So I thought you, having you on board. So, Top notch, mate. So happy to have to have you on board. <laughs> Just touching no, on that part, it. Rob. You know when um, we speak quite often on the phone, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Not like every day kind of thing, but when we do have a phone call, it's over it's an hour. Oh, it takes ages, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you came to do the course with us, which hopefully right. you got a lot out of. Yeah. But I remember at the time. Mm-hmm. You told me that you'd fell out of love with, with removals and you were almost kind of given it up. Can you elaborate on that time of life? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I suppose the best way to describe it is I actually had a conversation with a friend of mine called Dave Cordner. So shout out to Dave if you do get listening. Dave owns uh, Central Belfast Apartments in Belfast. And a number of weeks ago, we went out for a drink just to have a chat and a catch up. And we were sort of sitting there just talking about business and different things and I was sort of saying you know a few months ago um, we I was in a position there where I was like I either have to grow or I kind of have to scale back you know when you take on operational costs that you that, that, that maybe your revenue is isn't really 
it's barely just covering. Yeah. So I was like, it was either kind of grow or like go down a little bit. Yeah. So Dave was like, yeah, it's sort of everybody gets to that place in and in when you're scaling a business. It's, yeah. He was like, it's called no man's land. So whenever you go from solopreneur to business owner, um, and then you're trying to trying to grow, there's like that little. There's like a little awkward phase in between called no man's land where you're not really making yeah, any no, money. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, that's a really good way to put it. So I suppose the best way to describe it is I was in no man's land. Yeah. Yes, my lifestyle was paid for and yes, everything was going good. and It was a nice lifestyle business, but I kind of wanted to get to that next level. Yeah. And we had the operating expenses of an office, of an office team, of all the movers. Um, and then obviously we had our storage lease as well. And at that at that time, if when we had good weeks, everything was brilliant. But when we had bad weeks, it was really taking a hit on us. Yeah. So it was kind of like, and I was dilly dallying around whether or not to grow. And it was actually, you know, coming on this trip and seeing what you kind of gave me a bit of inspiration is to go right. We need to get to the next level. Um, I can continue doing this, and you know, maybe we can teeter around for another six months and just kind of keep going. But I was like, I think now is the time to go for it. So just come in here, give me a bit of inspiration yeah. to do that. Um, and that's probably the best way I can describe it, that I was in no man's land, you know. Yeah, and that's a good way to put it, you know, I don't yeah. know that, yeah. So I, I don't know if you experienced that whenever you were trying to grow and sort of take a step back. Um, but, you know, obviously in the busy season, everything's good. Yeah. But when you're in January, February, March time, it can yeah. be a little bit... I, th I think when you start a business, it's all exciting, isn't it? So it's all exciting. You you build and then you start to make money. But then, is that, as you say, you probably get stagnant yeah, don't you, for, that, bit, for yeah. that period. And, and to be fair, I think that separates the average yeah. from the best. Because if you get that, if you get past that period, then not everyone gets past that period yeah, mentally. Yeah. See what I mean, so that's that's when that's when you can you can you can excel because yeah. everyone will have that period. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's how you get through it, really. Yeah. I think that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, quite a lot of people would slip back at that point. Yeah. yeah. But if you can power through and beat through that wall. Yeah, and, and it, it, I also like to be working on projects that I work now. You yeah. Know, if we, we've got a goal to reach within the business, I like to be teetering away at the project yeah. rather than managing the day-to-day -day operations. And, and that, that next stage of getting the storage and obviously having inspiration from here, seeing instead of me going, right, you know, let, let's start off on a little bit of a smaller scale, but let's get us to the ne that next step. Yeah. The next step was the storage. I had a project in mind, yeah. and I was able to kind of go hard from the 1st of January when we're, we, whenever we started back. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I took a week in Mexico first, and then I went, <laughs> yeah. I went really hard but after that, that. That gives you a rest to that. Yeah, also yeah. gives you yeah. like inspiration, do you know what I mean? So you need, everyone needs a rest. I come up with my best ideas generally when I'm away, yeah. and I'm you know, on yeah. holiday and stuff. Yeah. Or when I wake up at 2 a.m. <laughs> can't yeah, get back to sleep. Case, eh? <laughs> you just wake up and your, your brain's going. You're thinking yeah. about all sorts of... Well, I don't know why. Why are you so creative at night? I just weird, yeah. I never write anything down either. I just think it and then forget it. Think, and yeah, yeah, that's what you need now, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah. What about... So what removals then? What why removals industry? What, what kicked it off? Good question. Um, the, <laughs> I suppose the simple answer to this, and I'm sure everybody... Uh, many people feel the same when they get into the removals industry is that it kind of it happened accidentally okay. so um, you know I find most people that either can get into the move moving industry either accidentally or generationally so for me it was basically we I was all, whenever I came back from Australia um, I was sort of working this job that I didn't really like working as an administrator and I was just born. It was the same thing day yeah. after day after day. Yeah. And then I kind of st sort of started looking online to try and buy some furniture, you know, go to the auctions. I'm going to sound like a real gypsy here. But <laughs> <laughs> go to the auctions, buying some like furniture and then selling it in Gumtree and Facebook okay, Marketplace. Yeah. And back in 2016, you know, it was really, really easy to sell stuff on yeah, Facebook yeah. Marketplace. Gary Vaynerchuk, do you know? Do you know that? Yeah, yeah, my yeah, yeah. Did, did you know him? Yeah, no, yeah. I didn't know back then. Uh, I didn't know, okay, yeah, 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 that's four, yeah, I followed five. him, yeah, yeah, I'm a big follower of Gary V, yeah. so, yeah, that's good, he's just signed in, I'll get off, well, oh, maybe if you follow Gary V, yeah, yeah. yeah. But for those who don't know Gary V, uh, check him out on YouTube, he's a good entrepreneur. And yeah, he, yeah, he is, and he, uh, and he does all the, the and it was only Gabo couple Charles, years, didn't he, yeah. Yeah, only, it was only a couple of years after when I found Gary V, and I was like, okay, I wouldn't say I was uh, I was as good as him. I wasn't going to like garage <laughs> yeah. sales or garage sales in America. Yeah. But we were able to go. So we were buying like in the auction. Sometimes you had like brand new washing machines there that maybe had like a tiny dent in the corner, cosmetic issues. And yeah. Picking them up for like forty to fifty quid. Yeah. And they were able to sell them for like one twenty. 
So we were able to make a wee bit of money that way. Um, and then eventually I realized people started asking me for deliveries. Yeah. And then I knew I would have needed a van to do the deliveries and charge a little bit of extra money. So um, I thought it would be beneficial for me to go out and buy a van instead of having a car. Yeah. So I ended up picking up a van. It was a blue transit van. It was a heap of shit, but I still miss it to this day. Um, <laughs> you should have kept it, man. You should have uh, kept I, it. I know, but... <laughs> yeah, it's hard at the time. You don't yeah. realise at the time, do you? But it's, it'd be great to have it's it. It's the mechanic. mechanic bills yeah. are in it. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, swear <laughs> <to> God, <laughs> I used to have to get up. I used to have to... The, the, there was something wrong with... I don't know whether it was the alternator or... Hopefully mechanics don't correct me in this, but I used to have to go out at 10 o'clock at night to start it up and drive around the block <laughs> and then get up at like five in the morning to do the same <laughs> because if I left it any longer than like six hours yeah. it just wouldn't start in the morning yeah so um, but yeah look I went out and bought the van my very first job was a house clearance for my cousin and I remember this so so clearly it was my 26th birthday and he had asked me to clear this house out I sold all the furniture and I had 500 quid in my pocket for a weekend's work and I was like I could really make something of this if I really if you pushed it. If I really pushed it. So yeah. from then on, I just, it was a few months later before I quit my job, but I knew then that I wanted to kind of go full time. And that's when the, the man of van business cards started coming yeah, out, yeah, the gum tree yeah. ads and whatever else. So yeah, it sort of just, that was the start of the, the, the journey. No, it's a great, it's a, and I think that's the best way to do it, like a side hustle. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a side hustle and then it become your main, that yeah. kind of overtook your main job. Yeah. 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 The, and, and, I spoke about this earlier on, but off camera. But you know, but going from the side hustle to the main job, um, you know, you're working at night time, lifting furniture after a full day of work, and then I was going on my lunch breaks and offloading like clearance work into the dump, yeah. which was right beside my, my office. <laughs> so everybody was going out for their lunch, and I was jumping in the van and trying to empty a full van with that, the yeah. stuff. But uh, you were doing stuff above others weren't. That's the yeah, thing, yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. They were having lunch, you were working. Yeah. But back yeah. then, I, the, I was like, it was that like sense of urgency because I was like, I've got a full van here. I've got jobs starting at 20 past five this afternoon. I've got a van, I've no room in the van, so I need to go and get this done. Yeah. Like get it done now. Um, but yeah, and the, the hardest decision from their transition from side hustle into full-time job was just the, the actual decision to quit the job that, yeah. that has always been it's the hard. most difficult decision yeah. for me it's a hard one isn't it that one yeah, yeah. and I think that's where you got away did, it, did the did the money overtake the money you was earning from the job or did you risk it no, kind of at the it. start did you risk it at the start yeah that's the see, it depends if you've got a mortgage and it depends what stage you are, you are in. Yeah. how old were you then 26 26 yeah so, so you would have had bills and stuff you would have had but I'd rent, 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 pay, I'm sure rent and pay, yeah, so it's still a big decision. Yeah. I felt, uh, my, my, my aim at that stage was like 60 quid a day. If I can earn yeah. 60 quid a day by myself, I will survive. And yeah. Then yeah. Obviously, it grows from there. And next thing, the target's 100 quid a day, and then it's 150. And yeah. Now, what is it about 60 grand a day? Yeah, 60 grand a day. I'll take that. Me and Rob, yeah. I took that target from the origin of us. Me and Rob used to make um, a load of, well, we had a bit of a side hustle when we were young, didn't we, Rob? What was that? I had yeah, a few, I had a few of them. Yeah. What was so that? I had sinky CDs. I used to yeah. what was it? Well, me and Rob used to, well, I rented out a flat. Uh -huh. So I was like solely responsible for paying the rent. None of the guys really helped me, but everyone <laughs> stayed with me. Every now and then someone would put a tenner on the electric, that's it. <laughs> But me and Rob used to like love going out all the time and it got to the point where we were so skint, so skint that we had to start selling our DVDs, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we had a DVD hustle, didn't we? <laughs> and we found a shop that would buy the second hand DVDs off you for 50p, was it a pound? Yeah, something like that, yeah, yeah. We used to sell DVDs to, to, for lunch, didn't we? Yeah, so we'd sell DVDs. <laughs> and then put them in the roulette machine. <laughs> yeah, and then buy like a cone of chips. Yeah. Sometimes you'd get rejected when they open the case and check yeah. if it's too scratched, wouldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, you can have the cone of chips. I only was the one that was, I think, I think the last DVDs to sell was uh, the, the Tom, Tom, Hanks. Tom Hanks box set. Yeah, yeah. So the Tom Hanks box set and what? I was like, I just can't do it, I can't do it. And then we took it in and I think we got about four quid. Four quid, we couldn't believe it. We still got it, didn't we? Yeah. We yeah. lost it all on roulette. So, yeah. so like, when, when you do start earning a bit of money from your business and looking back on those days, yeah, I, mean, that, I, I remember once... That I, wasn't a business, by the way, mate. That was yeah, desperation. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah, a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Starving. And, and we, but the, so looking back on those times... Yeah, 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 yeah. One time we... we my very early days in Australia, I got caught up on the hype of like the partying at the weekend because okay, I lived yeah. in a hostel 
and obviously like that was a lifestyle on. wasn't it over there yeah that's what yeah. you're doing yeah you kind of go there's like parties every night there's like events yeah. every night and like uh, i've spent all my money one weekend and i think i had like ten dollars left yeah. to do me until friday until i got paid and i think the the bus ticket for the week was like 750 it was a pensioner's pass as well <laughs> um that's what all i could afford and then i had like a few dollars left over and i, I remember bringing like a dry loaf of one dollar bread like to the building site the next day <laughs> and all the builders had all their nice Thai meals and they were sitting eating away and i was just oh, sitting really eating yeah. dry slices of bread and they were, they were uh they were going do you want us to get you some food? Yeah. I was like, no, man, I, I love dry bread. I love dry my bread. Trying to hold you down. Eat it every day. Okay, yeah, do some it water. Makes it strong, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, good times. Yeah, so, good, to, um, good to look back on them days, yeah. isn't it, to be fair? Absolutely. Go on, Moz. So, your business today, Yes. 2023, what size are we at? What are we offering? And you know, where are you looking to go? Okay, so 20, as of 2023, obviously we've started our storage business, so we've now got 100, 100 crates of storage with, 100, with 30 more coming. Um, we have a team, a core team of five people, but we're recruiting this week for well, fa- five full-timers, a couple of, you know... Ad uh, hocs. Ad hocs, yeah. Yeah. Um, we've, just rec- we've just run eight interviews this week. Um, some of our staff are getting promoted to sales roles, operations roles, and warehouse roles. Yeah. So we're trying to build another moving team to, like I said earlier on, uh, uphold the same standards we always did. So we're looking to take ourselves, at least we're looking to add another 30% in revenue to the business this year or more if possible, um, depending on how the year goes. But yeah, I, I, it's kind of one of those, every, every time you think you need to just pull back a little bit, mm. another opportunity comes along to just yeah. keep pushing forward. So. Yeah. Um, that's where we're at at the moment. We've got a we've got a, a team of five looking to expand to probably about ten by the end of the year. Amazing. Yeah, so, and um, what we'd like to add another. Yeah, we've got three Luton vans. I sold one last week. We've got one ten ton lorry. Um, I've been looking at an eighteen ton lorry and possibly another seven and a half ton to add to the fleet by the end of the year too. And what size is your storage offering at the minute? Did you just say that? Yeah, so we've got we've got a hundred uh, wooden hundred wooden crates, but we've got another thirty on the way. So we're going to pr- finish out that first warehouse with about one hundred and thirty. And how, what's the uh, full? What, what's the percentage full at the minute? Um, I, I, I don't know exactly, but I would say we're probably about sixty to seventy percent full. Yeah. I'd say we're probably about sixty on. Yeah, yeah, that's probably a good percentage, though, really, isn't it? Because yeah. then it allows for last minute stuff, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. You don't ever want to be at 100% capacity. 97% is usually yeah. a good place to be. Sometimes we are at 110 here. We've got it all in the office. We've got it down <laughs> yeah, corridors. Yeah. We've got yeah. stuff in the loft. Yeah. <laughs> our, 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 our first ever podcast, just me and Was, it was like, it was like he was full there, weren't it? Yeah. Although it might not look like, but it, but it was like, yeah. he was like crammed up in the corner. Yeah. yeah. We, and we just say yes to everything, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That seems to be our way. Yeah. But then you grow from that, don't you? Yeah. One of my famous phrases just is just leave it there for now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Leave it there for yeah. now. Leave it there for Six now. Six months later, sort of yeah, next yeah. week. <laughs> so, so storage. Do you use iMove for storage? Do you? Yeah. How are you finding that? Amazing. Um, so yeah, we're, we're promoting one of the guys, the warehouse manager, and he is uh, really enjoying looking after it. We're still getting getting to grips with. We got our site plan up the other day. Oh, you get a site plan up. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it's been that's been very helpful. Yeah. But even just knowing which crates are available and which ones aren't. A spreadsheet for me, uh, unless it's, it's, it does, it's not very pleasing on the eye, no. whereas I move, everything kind of just flows nicely. Just there, yeah. like, yeah. It's really easy to add and end contracts and see what's available, what's not available. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes spreadsheets only make sense to one person, don't they? Yeah. The person who created it. Yeah. Yeah. With I move it, it makes sense to everyone. Yeah. Um, what about the recurring invoices? That's a, have you started using that on the? I own? haven't actually yeah. because we have everybody on a uh, go cardless, so we, okay. we use go cardless for recur- yeah. recurring payments. So we, do, we haven't actually used the recurring invoice system. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but um, we, it, it's certainly something going forward that we're going to try and plan yeah. to use. Amazing. Cool, man, so yeah. you're enjoying it then. So the transition across. Yeah. Um, how are you finding that? The transition for me was okay for the team. It's been a little bit more difficult because people have had days off here and there and even I have had days off. It's been a wee bit more difficult for them, but now that we've all kind of got up to speed with it, 
everybody seems to really enjoy it. It's, yeah. The the thing I, I the thing I like about it most is that it's it's we don't need a system now for storage. We don't need a system, you know, a CRM. We don't need a, a system for vehicle management. It's all done under the one system, yeah. and it's all on you know tabs. It's easily accessible through your phone. It's easy to sign off job sheets. I, I you know I don't have to go in at six a.m. when I forgot to print off a job sheet. Yeah. To go out and print the job sheet for the team. Yeah. Uh, so were you printing before? Were you? We were printing, yeah. We, yeah. yeah, we were. We, were, I, we printed them and had to get them signed and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. of course, there's always one guy on the team that you know doesn't have any credit on his phone, so yeah. he can't access WhatsApp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Send PDF. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Look, so that that was. Um, well, what What would you say your favourite feature is on our move? Favourite feature is probably the. It's probably the storage. Storage yeah, section. Yeah. 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 Being able to see what we'll have available and when has yeah. it's been really helpful. Amazing. Well, thank you for the kind words. But I want to go back a little bit more. Okay. I want to still want to dive into your business. Sure. Okay. And in a different kind of aspect now, though, but I want to know about how you cope mentally. Okay. Um, it's a lot of pressure running a removals company, not just with staff. Like staff are our biggest credit. Mm -hmm. They let us down sometimes, but without staff, we wouldn't be able to run our business. Absolutely. Customers are very, very tricky, some of them. Mm -hmm. Solicitors yeah. are difficult to deal with. Um, last minute jobs, cancellations. How do you cope mentally? I know you work out a lot. Yeah, yeah. We know you're big on that. Yeah. Um, do you have any bad habits? Is there anything that you know you can slip down a, a dark alleyway kind of thing? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I mean, without without getting into it, yes, I I I am very I'm a very disciplined person. Um, I'm quite quite good at getting up in the morning, getting things done. You know, getting past bad days just to because like at the end of the day we've got responsibilities. Yeah. And I, I truly believe that. If we're if we want to if you want to choose to run a business and you want all the rewards of running a business, then you must be able to handle the responsibility of doing that. Yeah. So you've got responsibility to make sure your staff are paid on time. You've got a responsibility to make sure that your customers are looked after. Yeah. To make sure your accounts are sorted, your taxes are paid. You know your health and safety is up to scratch. The name just a few. So first first and foremost, you know keep. If, if you need to handle that amount of responsibility, you need to be in a place that's meant, you know, Gosh, kind of, yeah, well, good, good. a good mental place to be able to do it. And I find the best way for me is when I'm training regularly, I'm eating good food. Um, you know, my best time is if I'm training at 6 a.m. Uh, I usually walk the dog at 7. I try and get into the office for like 9, 10 ish. Yeah. Um, and then there, I'm in the office all day and I can handle any problems. Yeah. But I, I don't really. You, you know, of course, I have tough days mentally, like everybody. But I've got responsibilities, and I have yeah. to make sure that those responsibilities are adhered to. And I always, when I, I always think about that before I think about, oh, I'm having a, a bad day. Yes, I'll have a stressful day, and yeah. I'll complain about it. And yeah. you know, sometimes somebody might see me angry, frustrated, and annoyed, but I'll still take care of what I have to take care of. Course. of. I, I think that the, the the gym part. I think that I think it's important. I always say, like, no one. Will take that hour away from me. Yeah, you know what I mean, because it's good for your own mental health. Yeah, to, to 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 relieve stress, to stay healthy, and I, I think, as you say, if you do it in the morning, mm -hmm. if you do it in the morning, and it starts you for the yeah, day. Right yeah, it starts you off great yeah. for the day, and and you know that that that's my mechanism of coping with stress when I'm living a good living a good lifestyle and I'm training regularly. For somebody else, it might just be you know walking the dog or going for a massage yeah. or you know yeah. do, whatever self care means to you and whatever is going to help you um, perform at your best, then figure out what it is yeah, and make sure you incorporate it. But in terms of bad habits, um, look, I, I, I try to be as disciplined as possible, but I am a guy when I go out drinking or I have a few drinks, I get carried away. Yeah. Um, and and that's, I, I've accepted that about myself because I, it's not something that affects my lifestyle, really. Of course, I... You know, no, but that, that's just the Irish. That's yeah, the, yeah. The, I, I had a uh, night out with a few Irish uh, last month, and the, you know, it was going down. It was going down the road in an Uber, and they they there was pretending to be in an aeroplane. These two Irish lads, yeah. I think from from Northern Ireland, it was going down the, the the taxi in Bristol, 
uh, going down the road and then they, it was just pretending to be an aeroplane and then the Uber driver stopped and wanted them to get out mm-hmm. and all they did they was like okay we'll, we'll, be a, we'll be a helicopter so they ripped the they ripped the seal off the off the door and <laughs> yeah. started winging it around like a helicopter oh and I was literally like god these guys I thought I was crazy these guys are next level yeah. do you know what I mean yeah I mean yeah so I, mean, I, I, I can have a couple of drinks at home and be like sensible and that would never really affect me but when I go away with the guys, or you know, I'm, I, I just I can get carried away. Yeah. Uh, and but that's okay because it's not, it's it I haven't ever let any of my bad habits get to the point where it's actually affecting my work and affecting yeah. things in my life. Usually when I go away, it's or if I go out, it's just it's for a celebratory reason. Yeah. Whereas a lot of people drink and do those things to cope with stress, and I'm not a stress drinker. I'm a yeah. drink, you know, I'd like to have a few drinks whenever I'm celebrating something. Yeah. So. Well, it's a coping mechanism for a lot of yeah. people, and it was for me. So yeah. I'm almost four years sober now, but it was definitely, I could drink by myself in a room. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it wasn't a fun thing for me. Yeah. Uh, so that's the reason I ask that. So what do you do to, to cope with stress? So obviously, it's fine to go out and get blasted with your friends every now and then, but it's when you're doing it, yeah. Like, yeah, absolutely. and you're secret about it kind of thing. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this. Yeah. I mean, um, I have been in, I have been in situations before where I've found myself, you know, even in the last couple of years where I found myself smoking weed or doing something I shouldn't be doing and it is starting to affect my work yeah. or you know something you maybe do recreationally and then all of a sudden starts to creep in yeah. to your day to day life yeah. and, and, and that has happened to me before with you it was alcohol with me yeah. it was weed but then it kind of got to the point where you know it starts off at the weekend yeah. and then the next thing it goes into, you know, maybe you'll have one at the very end of the night and then the next thing, very end of the night. It's after, it's after, a, a, after a meal, yeah. yeah so yeah, it's yeah. like, and, and then, but it's a bag of Haribo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Large yeah. pizza. <laughs> the and, the and Mr. Bean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Family guy or not. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, laughing. Yeah. In, in fact, has anyone got us? A... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, like this is the thing about about these destructive habits, they, they creep in very very slowly. Yeah. And, and, and before before you know, I'm sure you probably didn't even realise when you were drinking. No. How badly it was affecting you until you stopped. Yeah. Yeah. It was, a, it was definitely an on reflection kind of thing. Definitely. Yeah. 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 And, and yeah. I've seen some. I've seen our, our close mates. I've seen. I've seen them smoke weed quite driven in their career. They've started smoking weed. They've crept crept in and, and then. I've just seen them. Look, they've gone stagnant, and yeah. then before you know it, just listening to music and not yeah. and not kind of like progressing. But like as soon as he stopped, stopped yeah. weed, yeah. he was straight back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And if, there, if there's anybody listening to this, any business owner um, who is who, like, if you are, if you have a destructive habit, you're definitely going to know what it is. You know, if that if, if the one thing that you stopped, you know, you'd be able to progress. Um, and sometimes it doesn't become a problem until it really becomes a problem mm. and if you can sort of nip it in the butt early you know the behavior is destructive you know it's not serving you you know it's holding you back that's if you can get it before it gets destructive then that's yeah you know, that, that that's a good time but it's good it's certainly something to pay attention to yeah i think it's important to speak about this stuff on these podcasts because yeah. there's when rob did my uh, alcohol video which was probably the most well taken video we've ever done Rob. yeah because it was a bit dubious to start yeah. to, to release it weren't we i was the most nervous i've been yeah. about releasing a video yeah. but the the reception we got was, was outrageous unreal. yeah um so i think a lot more people are going through that especially in business yeah um so it's good to showcase a little bit you know yeah, yeah. and also offer you know if someone wants to give me a call i'm, I'm always up for helping people like yeah, that because no, no one wants to speak about it but when they hear someone oh actually he's going through this the same yeah. and then you've had lots a lot of nice messages from it so many yeah. i had um I, it's consumed me a bit to be honest because i had one woman that i hardly knew uh, i'm going to let you into a bit of a secret here she worked at the sunbed shop that i used to go to <laughs> and um and she messaged me to say that she's drinking two bottles of vodka a day her husband doesn't know she's drinking it in secret and she was asking me for and I got oh, myself involved a bit, do you know what I mean? Oh, uh, like yeah. too far, yeah. too yeah. far. There's a few deep, of yeah. them, there's a few yeah. messages. You don't realise, yeah. do you? But then I put, we put that out and yeah. it really helped a lot of people. I mean, you'll, you'll do anything for a free sunbed, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's go see yeah. we're just yeah. talking about yeah. that next yeah. schedule. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
but honestly, you know, it goes to show, doesn't it? It really does. It does. Yeah. Alcohol can literally yeah. take anyone. Yeah. Like, uh, and, and this is the thing as well, you know, so many people are hiding this and this is why I'm sort of speaking to the audience now. If you, you know you've got a destructive behaviour, do reach out. By the way, reach out to me if you've been down the road of, you know, being addicted to weed before. Reach out to Warren about the alcohol. Yeah. And I actually remember quite, uh, quite clearly, I was going through something. Um, I, was going, I had a couple of bad days because of different things, maybe about a year ago. And I, I was texting you about something and then I said, oh, I'm having a bit of a bad day. And you called me straight away saying, is everything okay? I said, yeah, I'm not really, you know, like partying about too much the weekends and stuff. And you really talked me through it and really helped. So, yeah. you know, it's important to have people around you that uh, are people you can reach out to, you can feel you can reach out to. Yeah, um, it's good to talk, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's about, and, and a lot of people say about the word balance, I, I prefer the word control. If you can still, if you're that kind of person who can keep your, your, your habits under control and it doesn't affect your day-to-day -day life, yeah. and you want to have a bit of a blowout now and again, there's nothing wrong with that. But if it, if it starts affecting your life, then reach out to someone and get some help because it, it will slowly, slowly get worse and worse. Yeah. Moderation, isn't it? Let's be honest. Moderation. Yeah. moderation. Yeah. yeah. So, so we, uh, go on, what's No, I'll let you, you okay. talk. So we'll kick it back to the, what, what do you think of the removals industry at the moment? What, what state's it in? Is it busy? Is it quiet? Is it? <laughs> like, you know, it fluctuates um, week yeah. to week, month to month. At the moment, I think it's pretty solid. Um, for anybody who is being, uh, who, who's advertising and being a bit more aggressive with their marketing and with what they're doing and their, and their sales and whatever else, when I say aggressive, I just mean trying to be out there and have an online yeah. presence. Um, if people, I think those people are still staying pretty busy. Um, there are, you know, the, the D players of the removals industry are now getting wiped out because everybody, everybody was an A player during mm. COVID. And, you know, if we're going into a bit of a difficult financial position, the D players are going to be eliminated and it's only going to be the A player standing on top. And I certainly want to make sure Chris Cross is, is standing yeah. there. Love ready, that. Ready, ready to <laughs> take over that. some more market share. Doubt, yeah. in it is City. survival of the fittest, isn't it, in these times? Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, with anything, it's, you know, at the end of the day, I know, you know, in the removals industry, uh, it's, it, we, we all have, you know, it's great that we all work together. Um, and it's one of those industries where you're always going to need help from another company. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, you've got a business to run, so you still need to be, you need to be put food on the table and trying to grow it. And so you need to be yeah. competitive. Of course yeah. you do, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we've spoke to a lot of removal industries, obviously, through, through iMove, but there's not really, I don't see the competitiveness, uh, although I suppose it's because we get people from all over, yeah, and there's yeah. millions of like, removal yeah. companies out there, but I, I never see the, like, obviously, you two are friends, and yeah. like everyone we've spoke to, obviously, you run your own removal company, but that, I don't think that's played a part in people, putting people off, or, no, or anything. I suppose it's so. areas, and it? it's different yeah. areas. One thing that, again, you're very similar with, similar characteristics is I want to be friends with every company. Mm -hmm. yeah. I actually live two doors away from a removals company. Yeah. He's been trading over 20 years. He's happy with his two bands. He doesn't want to grow. Yeah. And I, I offer him advice. I have no competitors whatsoever. I love being friends with the removals industry, but I think the older companies have still got that bit of like uh, judgmental ways. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what's your view on that? What's your view on the industry from that perspective? Yeah, well, I mean, when I say, when, when I mentioned the word competitive, I don't mean as in he's my enemy, he's my competitor. It's, yeah. it's, it's more about being competitive in terms of I want to adopt this technology, I want to move fast with this. Yeah, yeah. Want to, to being competitive from that front. Yeah. Um, I, I have a great relationship with all the, the local companies yeah. in Belfast. We all help each other out. You know, there a couple of weeks ago, I needed 150 boxes for a packing job, and one of the guys supplied me them, and and it was no issue at all. So there, there's little things like that that you you would really have to um, take into consideration before you start falling out with all your neighbors. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, because at some because it's such a specialist, nuanced sort of field, you will always need help from somebody. Of course, at some, you will. Yeah. Some time. You will. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, you you can I you always want to be friends with as many people as possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. And certainly being a lone wolf in the removals industry is not fun if you have nobody to talk to. No, we've had that, yeah. And it's, not a fun, it's not fun being the director of a company, especially yeah. if you don't know which way to take your business or yourself next. So sometimes it's lonely, isn't it, being, being the owner yeah. of the company? 
Uh, you can be surrounded by so many people, but yeah. still feel so lonely. Yeah, yeah. That's, and, and that's why that's why it's good to have peers in the same position. Yeah, because yeah. 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 you can I'm just vent, you know. Yeah. With Tash, with Tash, my wife, you know, I vent to her a lot, um, but I'd sometimes prefer to vent to somebody like you because you understand it a bit yeah. more. Tash yeah. is involved; she understands yeah. perfectly. But sometimes you, you, we've got the same brain. You know, we're going for the yeah. same problems. Yeah. Does that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely, and it's it's great to have. It's great to have people, you know, that you can reach out to. Yeah. And I know I've always got like a, a phone call yeah. away from from different people in the industry, and it, just even the thought of having that is yeah. is, is, is lot, just makes me a lot more relaxed. It really does, uh, and, and that's what I think we want to create revival move as well. We want to create a community where people are helping yeah. helping yeah. each other out, and if anyone needs advice, just you can comment on the group. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. build build a real good community, helping each other out. Just yeah. just to give the audience a bit of context, it's the 25th of August today, which is last Friday, and yesterday you put out a big post, didn't you? And I wanted to just touch on that, about the weight limit of vehicles. Yes, yes. And um, £450,000 fine, is, yeah, that, is yeah. that about right? The crazy half a million fine for, I think it was an electrical company, if memory serves me correct. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, and it goes on the... Um, the profitability of the business, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's how they value it now. Is that a new thing? Do we know? No, that's 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 always been like. So how how they hit you with fines is a percentage of what your company the owns. Company is enough to depending on what it is, it's enough to not enough to put you out of business. Yeah. But like not so enough much to, to keep you a lesson. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's how they've always measured it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's obviously you know pretty pretty big company to get hit with the fine like that. Yeah. And. It's something that I try and explain to, the, like I mentioned in the video yesterday, um, something to try and explain to customers, you know, somebody's coming around saying they can do a, a, you know, pack everything really tightly, we'll get it all into one van. You've really got to consider the impact of the weight on the road and I, I actually didn't say this in the video, but we had a van coming up from Waterford last week yeah. and it was fully loaded to its capacity and we had a tyre that burst on the way up at 70 miles an hour in the motorway. And the guys had a bit of uh, guys had a wobble, but they were able to pull it over safely. Yeah. Now, had that vehicle have been overloaded, it would have it probably would have been really really serious. Yeah. yeah. So when we're yes, of course, and I, I don't mean for this to sound like a sales pitch, and <laughs> but you know that's kind of why we do charge a little bit more because we need to allocate more resources to do the job safely. And as operators, you know, if if you're if you don't have a license or you don't have um, you know insurance and stuff yeah you're, you, you don't have that liability whereas we do have that liability and I want to make sure that we're doing things not only properly for the customers but properly in terms of doing things correct by the law yeah so how, how are we measuring that in the removal industry <coughs> the way is it is it just by eye and then you kind of gain the experience to tell if yeah. it's overweight or not in, re in reality <coughs> it's very very difficult yeah. yeah it's almost impossible unless you've actually got yeah. scales yeah. But it's it's to do with the stacker. It's the stacker's ability to be able to know when it's a bit too full or when yeah. it's you know, when the heavy items are coming in and what axles they're on and stuff. So we're asking a lot of our staff. Let's be honest, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we do run a risk, but we run a well-educated risk. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And it, know, it must you, be quite hard to go to the maximum limit, though, or is it? Is it it's easy uh, in a is it? Okay, it's yeah. easy okay, in a yeah. van? In yeah. a van and a seven and a half ton lorry, it's very, very easy. Yeah. If once you get to 10, 12, 15 ton, or 15, 18 ton, it's difficult, but it's not impossible. Especially okay, if yeah. you're doing like pallets of tiles and things. Yeah. 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 But so just, to, to, just to give you an idea, Rob, my 18 ton lorry weighs 10 ton empty, so I've got 8 ton to play with. Yeah, yeah. And it's quite hard to use eight turn with furniture moving a house yeah, yeah unless it's a library and you're just moving books yeah and easily do that then yeah yeah but the vans are it varies on the size of the van cause yeah you there's a lot, there's a lot of things to vans. take into consideration that now with passengers regard in the way yeah, yeah. If you've got three passengers you could have 300 kg yeah, just yeah. in the front you know what yeah, I mean? yeah and you so you you'd probably be looking anywhere between one and 1.4 ton in a, a, a payload in a in a looting van yeah you know, 1.4 would be on the generous side, um, but you can always want to keep it, like you say, because you've got the if you've got three people in the front of it, yeah. there could be a couple hundred kilo easy. Yeah. Um, so it it is kind of up to the the stacker, yeah. and you, you can always tell by even looking, especially if you've got a low loader, 
or you can tell by if you've ever started driving an overloaded van, you can definitely feel like a yeah. sway. Yeah. yeah. So it's you know it's it's, a, it's definitely something to, yeah. to take into consideration. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> where do you see the removals industry heading? in the next 12 months. Next so maybe not the market, but the actual industry, uh, how AI is coming in now. Do you think that's gonna play a part in removals somehow? Yeah, um, I think for, you know, the, the good news about AI and removals is it's not gonna replace the actual movers. So there's always, there's always gonna be a place for the guys that are actually doing the moves. So there's, you know, those jobs are safe. I yeah. think all the jobs are safe um, in terms of, uh, you know, even office and things, there are ways we could slicken up your 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 website and back end mm -hmm. operations and automations with AI. Yeah. But I think over the next twelve months, I think every removals company owner should definitely start getting used to using AI. Yeah. And all train all your staff and how to use AI because it is a great. I don't want to say second brain, but it's great to bounce ideas off and yeah. great to yeah. do. You know, it's great to be playing about with because. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, with it, maybe not in the next 12 months, but certainly in the next 36, um, have, you know, being able to use AI is going to become a really, really yeah. yeah. I mean, we're we're looking at ways to integrate it into into why we everything. We're going to get the financial section out of the way, and then we're going to look at because uh, in our industry, obviously the software it's, you can it, you can use it in abundance, and there's loads of ways to use it. Yeah. Uh, and I've already used different softwares that are using it and, and implementing it, and it's. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the future's bright <laughs> with AI. Yeah. The, way, the way I think about it is, if you couldn't use uh, Microsoft Office ten years ago, you were you, you were very limited to your jobs. Yeah. If you can't use software, um, you know, depending on what field you're in, but if you if you don't have the ability to use any software in twenty twenty two or twenty twenty three, forgot the year there. Yeah. <laughs> twenty twenty three, yeah. you're going to find it very difficult to to sort of get a job in today's market in yeah. five, ten years if you can't use AI, yeah. it's gonna be the same thing. I, I yeah. just I just think it's another tool. It's it's another tool to, to do the yeah. task. Yeah. You know what I mean it's like people used to we never used to have big machines to dig holes. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the way I look at it. Yeah. You, you, people used to dig it themselves with a spade yeah, yeah. and now you've got a big plant hire to do it for them. It's just it's just the same. It's, just, yeah, it's yeah, exactly the same. Involved, yeah. it? It's like the internet when that came out. Yeah. I mean everyone was like, oh the internet's now the the, the internet is it's like it's a second like, world, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. The reason we're at the top of the food chain is because we can adapt humans. Yeah. So yeah. you know we should be able to adapt to this. We adapt yeah. to everything else. And but the, the scary thing is, AI, AI actually taking over. I watched yeah. a few uh, podcasts who, yeah. Yeah, and any, it, death, it, yeah, yeah, it would. Yeah. As long yeah. as it's not used to, um, you know, as long as it's not manipulated, yeah. which I think it is. I was on a website yesterday. Not going to name the website. But I can tell every little bit of wording is written by AI. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can tell. Chat GBT. Yeah, yeah, I can just tell because it's like that. It's all American. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the spelling's American, so I instantly know. But maybe I'm just in tune with that. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know whether that's yeah. gonna. Um, Backfire on the website's analytics and. I think it will. Yeah, yeah on the SEOs exactly. and stuff, it will. Yeah. 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 You see, the thing actually. I Please, somebody reach out and correct me if I'm wrong, but if, if I think the way that Google is working is their algorithm, it's not about AI detection, it's about whether or not the AI for the website copy is actually useful for the end user or customer. So if you use AI and it's still really helpful and useful, Google will rank it. Right. But yeah. if you just have a very generic and it's not, it's not useful for the customer at all, then it's the, they're going to de-rank it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because the, the more I'm using so, yeah. ChatGBT, I think it is getting it is quite generic with the, with the answers. Yeah. yeah. Like the words are kind of coming out the same, but it is a, it is a good tool for me to yeah. to have yeah. to have it in locker yeah. definitely, hundred sure. percent. So let's touch a bit about social media because this guy's social media is I'd say up there best in the industry up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you, that. You're, you're active. Honestly. Put it that way. You're active, and uh, yeah. You um, actively, I mean, you're well loved, you know. Yeah. Give yourself a pat on the back for that. Everyone who knows you loves you. They've got nothing but high words to speak about you. I'm really, so, I'm really glad saying? to hear that. I, we've actually been very inconsistent this year with social media, but um, I, I appreciate those kind of words, and I'm really glad that everybody else yeah. in the industry enjoys our social media. Um, yeah. It's it's certainly something that I am really wanting to focus on. Um, like I said earlier on, there's, I wouldn't say shiny objects, there's things that keep opportunities to keep coming up to yeah. develop other areas of the business and they really require my full focus but marketing is something I really want to pay attention to and, yeah. and really create great content again because yeah. 
I enjoy it when I'm doing it. Yeah. Um, and obviously credit the you guys, uh, and obviously I mentioned before, you know, yourselves and uh, Asheville Weekly really inspired us to really want to do the YouTube channel as well. So I'm yeah. hoping that we can get more of those episodes out too. Yeah. It's a funny one, isn't it, the marketing, because the content is so important and I've got two videographers, Rob's my main one obviously, and then my um, YouTube stuff is a guy called Fraser, he's much cheaper, um, very, <laughs> <laughs> uh, very uh, early in the game, yeah. so I'm just utilising him. <laughs> much cheaper, yeah. What was his video? I get into he can afford him, you know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Mate, we outgrow each other. But, but sometimes, sometimes, I'm just trying to say, I'm sometimes I don't want to film. Yeah. But you've got to give these guys a bit of a, a you know, I'll book him for next Thursday, sir, yeah. and I'll yeah. wake up. Yeah. And I've had nothing but shit on the phone, like staff and vans broke down, and I don't want to film, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I've never once cancelled on him. I've just come in and I've just done it because yeah. I know how important it is. Yeah. And this is exactly why I would love somebody to come in and do it because I've done all the vlogging, like the, the daily vlogs myself. So if I don't feel like doing it, yeah. I've got a really busy day, yeah. then I'm not going to do it. Whereas if somebody is there, I'll definitely do it. Yeah, you just, just do it. That's yeah. a really good idea. Yeah. Or how do I find someone who's cheap? Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, easy. Yeah. It's not Bob anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come to terms. Yeah. I, 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 I like you, though, to be fair. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. No, but a bit of context on that. Rob works on the oil rigs. Um, two weeks on? Two weeks on, three weeks off. Two yeah. weeks on, three weeks off. On his three weeks off, you're pretty busy doing got, videos. got a media, media company, yeah. Uh, and obviously you've media got company iMove now. For, for five, and um, yeah, now I move, yeah, so quite busy, but all manageable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, missus probably wouldn't think that, but... But yeah, now nah, nah, I'm loving iMove, loving, loving obviously creating content for iMove yeah. uh, and get to create content off the podcast, give, give content to other removal companies yeah. uh, and that's what, yeah, that's what we're trying to do, yeah. So the last podcast we did, and I think we're going to wrap this up a bit now, aren't we? Unless you want to continue. Unless you've got anything, anything you want to bring up, anything give you value. About. Not off the top of my head. Um, Any shout outs you want to give? <laughs> I love you, mom. I love you, mom. <laughs> Look, always, you know, friend. Like, shout out to friend. Well, actually, the team, the removals team at Chris Cross. Yeah, yeah. Should yeah. really give them a shout out because yeah. they are honestly. And even today, I know they're under serious pressure. Yeah. And I'm here, and you know, credit to them. I'm sure they're all very frustrated because we have been a bit short staffed this week. Um, we're, sh but they're they, they manage to pull it off every time and. They're always willing to stay late and, and really help when things are tough. Yeah. Um, so really shout out to them. Uh, and obviously, you know, partner Neve, who's always very supportive. Yeah. Mum and dad, who, you know, always want us over for dinner once a week and just yeah. check to see how we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Always there for advice. So just, you know, people in the closest circle. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. That's sure. amazing. Love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about so, the last the question? Yeah, so that, I'm going to jump on to that. But sometimes just touching on that, because I think it's important and well done to you for, you know, applauding your staff members. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of interviews, and I've done it myself, I fell into that trap and I felt bad afterwards where they say, what is your biggest issue in the removals industry? Mm -hmm. And my natural answer was staff. And my staff would have listened to that. And they're not all bad. It's only a couple of them, do you know what I mean? Sometimes you get some bad apples, yeah. but in reality, they're the best thing that's ever happened to the business, aren't they? Absolutely. And we need to say thank you. Yeah, it, just the, even things as simple as, you know, thank yous, uh, I try and do it as much as possible. I try, I try and bring the positive energy to them. Yeah. You can tell sometimes, you know, everybody has bad days and I, I, do, I do my best. And, you know, I know I've got a lot of development to do as a manager and as a leader and as a, as a business owner and entrepreneur because, yeah. you know, I'm still going up the levels and you know the, the how the staff perform I always feel is a reflection on how I perform yeah, and yeah. I, I have to give them a lot of credit because they do work extremely hard of course yeah and, yeah. Uh, and you know they don't always complain to my face but they, I, I know they, they, <laughs> yeah. see no matter what they always they always make sure that the company's best interests are met and I, I, how, how, how much more can you ask from your staff you can't yeah i'm a massive advocate i always say thank you yeah. whenever i see a staff member i don't cross paths all the time but normally when i'm here and they leave i say thank you for today i'll make sure i say thank you it's a big thing for me and it's it's not insincere i mean it yeah you know i mean everything like every 
every boxer staff member lifts for me, I appreciate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So well done for congratulating. So anyway, the other guest we had on today, okay. well we're having on today, sorry, <laughs> is Mark Winterbourne, who okay. you know, you've dealt with for a long time. Yes. And what we're doing is we're getting them to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got Mark's question here. Okay. And he wants to know from you, I can see how successful Criss Cross has been as I have supplied him for so long. What advice would you give to someone looking to start their own removals company? Okay, so um, I've, I've answered this question a few times to, you know, privately to people, but I'll answer it uh, publicly. So your first six to 12 months in the removals industry should not be money focused. You will make money, but it should not be money focused. It should be focused on making your customers happy, getting those good reviews in and building a reputation. And in that, throughout that process, in the first 12 months, you will lose money at times, and not all the time, but you will, you will have to you know, take the hit if you make a yeah. mistake, especially if you're not experienced. Um, and and if, you're, if you can't part, if, if you're, can't part with money because you've made a mistake, then your reputation is going to go downhill. And you know, it, it's, it, it takes at least a year to build up a half decent reputation, but it takes yeah. one job to ruin it. Yeah. So don't focus on money, focus on your customer. Um, it's probably the main piece of advice I would give. And the, the, the second thing would be really think about your end goal. You know, you can be, you can work three days a week if you have a, a, a couple of ads or a lorry, and you can work three days a week and you can make a really good living just doing that. You know, maintaining your vans, maybe have a couple of casual team members and you, you charge a premium because you're doing, um, you're doing a really, really good job. Yeah. And you work, you know, Wednesday, Wednesday yeah. Thursday, Friday, let's say, and you can earn a good living. But if you want to go beyond that, then you better be prepared to really scale the business up. You need to become good at hiring. You need to become good at training. You need to become good at managing. And you really have to be able to step into that role as the entrepreneur and, yeah. and hire a team and focus more about building the team and building, looking at your business from an outside view. Um, but if you're going to go up, if you want to get to that stage where you have storage, um, you have multiple vans, multiple yeah. staff, yeah. you are going to have to enter no man's land for a while and it's not pleasant trying to get all yeah. those things in place. So yeah. um, if you're willing to go through that stress, then uh, go through it. But it, it, it doesn't get any easier the, the bigger you get. It really doesn't. No, I don't want that to sound negative or anything, but you better be, if you, if you want an easy life, then don't try and scale the removals business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, you, yeah. if you want them, um, if, you, if you really, really love the business or you're really committed to it, and I've had issues with commitment to it in the past, but since I've really committed in 2023, things have been harder, but they've been easier. You yeah. Know, yeah. The problems have been bigger, yeah. but it's yeah. been easier for me to deal with because I'm committed. Yeah. So make sure you're committed. That's the best piece of advice I can give you. Amazing advice, mate. And Great advice answer. That I yeah. actually live by myself. So thank you for coming on today to Movecast. Yeah. Uh, if anybody's interested in trialing out iMove, you can use Chris as a case study. <laughs> yeah. uh, you can ring Chris at any time you said on a Sunday night. <laughs> Sunday night, night yeah. Yeah. Where, can, where can we find you and where can people find you? Uh, so if you want to find me, my Instagram, well, all my social media handles are at chrismcgee9090. Chris McGee 90 and then... Yeah. Should we tag? Should we tag them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll tag it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said Chris McGee ninety and then nine zero, but I didn't want someone typing in ninety ninety. Yeah, so, yeah. So is that words? Is, is that words 90. or numbers or? <laughs> and if I lived in Belfast and yes. I was looking to move house, where would I find you online? Uh, What's your oh, website? Sorry, chriscrossmovables dot com. Is that what you meant? Chris <laughs> Cross, yeah, yeah. All handles. Uh, you know, so yeah. yeah, all the handles. Chris Cross Removals and Storage uh, website. You know, Facebook, Google, we're, we're there. Check out our reviews. Um, you know, like I said, it's credit to our really, really great team. The fact we've got, we've, we've done so well with the, the five star reviews. Amazing, mm -hmm. mate. So Chris has got a YouTube channel out, and he's also got a podcast which he's kicking back off, and he's doing it um, a little bit different this time. Soon, I need to make a commitment. What day is it today? Twenty fifth, Friday, the twenty fifth of August. The twenty fifth of August. By one week today, I will have the video editor hired, and I will have the first episode out by the end of September. And um, me and Rob are gonna. So this video will probably be out <laughs> by the end of next yeah. year. <laughs> me and Rob are gonna 
guarantee because you've took this trip. Yeah, we're going to we be paid come to you. We will, Amazing. you know, you can yeah. host us. You can take us Perfect. out for a meal. Absolutely. <laughs> pay for that hotel. Yeah, no problem. No yeah. problem. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll be on your podcast. Hi, so hi, 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 mate. And sorry, in terms of hotels, one. I, I, oh, like, I, I just like nice pillows. Three and a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like nice pillows and, and yeah. flavoured bowl yeah. with water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eat him on your behalf. Ah, no. Yeah. 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 The Ritz. Um, I can adapt. I can, yeah. I can adapt back to the old days. If it's expensive for videos, what they're like for a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, I hope yeah. you enjoyed. Uh, yeah. And thanks again, Chris. Cheers, 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 Legend. 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 Legend